What's up, JB Navy? It's Jasmine Black, and I'm back with another video. And today's video, of course, is a lunch with me. And we are here at Kirk and Rashida's new restaurant, Frost Bristol Bar. Today I have a guest. Michelle Valbrun here, aka Money Making Mitch. I met him at an event. I'm gonna give you guys that vlog. If that vlog isn't already up by the time I post this video, but I met him um, at a networking event, and I was like, Hold up, you got some financial education. He also have a book out called Prolific. Y'all know I'm a Nipsey fan, so I had to stop and see what this book was all about. I brought him here today because you guys asked me a whole bunch of questions about how us dancers make money, handle money, and all of that. And he's gonna be able to answer some of the questions for us today. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that video right now. Peace family. Thank you so much, Queen Jasmine. Uh, my name is Michelle Vavrum. AK Money Making Mitch. I'm a certified public accountant, award winning author, and a tax strategist. And essentially, what I do is I help entrepreneurs, business owners save money on taxes legally and ethically, and also provide them with a structure and really a, a methodology to maximize their profits. And he's gonna help us stripper girls, okay? Hey. <laughs> he's gonna help us do our taxes, he's gonna help us get our money in order, he's gonna help us with all of that, okay? So I got a couple questions for Mitch, and these are questions that you guys be on fire to ask me. If I'm missing any questions, you guys ask them down below, and I'll be sure to do another video with Mitch, or you guys can contact him via Instagram or email, and you can ask him these questions, you guys, yourself. What exactly is a CPA? Yeah, so a CPA is a certified public accountant. And all that really means is just an individual that did an undergraduate degree in accounting, and they also have a master's because you need like 150 credit hours to do that. Right. So it's just an individual that went to school for accounting and they also have to pass this like really crazy hard exam, like a four part exam, yeah. going over taxes, accounting, Anything accounting related, that's what the, the, that, that test covers. So basically, it's like you go to school, we know you know what you're talking about, but now we need to make sure for you to get the CPA title, we got to give you another test to make sure you really, really know. Right, exactly. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. CPA is like a certification. Exactly. It's super account. Yeah, that's like the super top, like one of the highest level accounts. Okay, so yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. super accountant. Okay, <laughs> so in what ways can a CPA be in like of assistance to an exotic dancer? Like, how would you help somebody like me? Right. Yeah, really, I mean, there's a ton of ways that we can do it, right? So really for us, what we help you do is a couple of things, right? So you have different CPAs. Well, let me take a step back. Mm -hmm. So you have, there's levels to this, right? When it comes to the CPAs and different kinds of what they do. So you have CPAs that focus on bookkeeping. Right. So that's making sure that you're, the, whatever you're spending money on and doing your transactions, all that's organized and they create financial statements for you, all that good stuff. You also have CPAs that focus on tax. Right. Um, you also have CPAs that kind of help you with like personal finance mm -hmm. as well. So you have different kinds of CPAs and they do different things. Really how, how I help my clients is really a couple of ways. So one, I help them focus on identifying ways that they can save money on taxes. Okay. Um, also, I help them with that that structure and helping them with kind of like that bookkeeping piece by doing more like a higher level it's more what i call like cfo services yeah but they can help you essentially what we can help you do is make sure you get your money right <laughs> right right means. so basically okay so how would a dancer interact with you so you're my cpa right i have to keep track of my tips in order for you to help me right mm -hmm. so what i would do is like what what would what would you what would you like if you started working for me as an exotic dancer like what do you need me to do in order for you to be like to help me? Yeah, yeah. So really, what I do and what I've also what I help my other clients do mm -hmm. is I take them through a process, and I call it the CPA success process. It's a it's a it's a it's a methodology that I came up with. Right. I talk about it in my book, but really, first the first step is clarity, right? So I need to understand like where you're at. So you tell me you're an exotic dancer. Right. Cool. So what I need to do is ask you a ton of questions about your lifestyle. How much money are you making? Um, per year, do you have any children? Right. Do you have any other businesses on the side? Like, what else? Are you we gotta doing? bring all the money together, exactly. all the incomes. Exactly, okay. bring all the incomes together right. so I understand one where you're at and then understand where you're trying to go. Right. That's gonna be the other piece. Are you looking to start taking some of that money and investing it, or are you putting it away for retirement, whatever the case is? Right. And then that next piece is that P piece, which is power. So really, power is really giving you the you know, the knowledge, the information that you need in order to accomplish your goal. So if you're telling me like, yo Mitch, I'm looking to get a house right, soon, right. that could be a goal that we could work towards and basically getting, giving you the knowledge and information 
to do so. And then another piece with that is um, the accountability piece, which is the A. And accountability pieces really where I step in the most is coming in and if you need help like getting all your finances everything organized for the year so where I can tell you okay um, Jasmine this is how much you made during the year right if you have all your expenses organized and I can help you do that you have all your expenses this is how much you spend this is what your profit is for the year right and this is and then with that profit that's also you take that information and that's what you use to get your taxes done okay so it's like a full full process and you know it could be a, a year-long project it could be and a year is know. not really that long like people yeah. have to have patience like a year is not that long like imagine how many years you spend with your shit not together one year to get your right. shit together and it'd be life-changing i would say to that piece too so like to have all that organized and set up so we can help you get that set up like within you know a month or so just to get it like at least to get the structure going right and if you want to like let's say you're too busy like no I, mitch you tell me come to me say mitch i don't like to do the accounting piece i'm too busy i'd rather focus on other things numbers scare me whatever the yeah. case is i could take that on and then as transactions are coming in, i can continue working the background like remotely and making sure all that's organized so when it comes to tax time, you already have all that stuff laid so out. So how would you do that? Like if I say, Mitch, I don't like all this keeping track stuff, how would you keep track for me? Like how would that Yeah, happen? so the biggest thing is, so one, as as an exotic dancer, you're considered what's called a self-employed, yeah. right? So yeah. what you would need, um, if you don't have it already, is you would need to have a separate uh, business account set up. Yeah. Set up, right? Because because you're self-employed, you wanna, you wanna separate your personal, um, right. income and, and expenses from your business expenses. okay so, so that is a talent. pause right there i did that's something i did not know he is suggesting that dancers you are considered a business have a separate account your personal account even though even though you feel like oh i'm a dancer this is me this is who i am you you are a business so he's saying have your personal account have your dancer account okay so have your uh Peaches account, okay, <laughs> and then have your real name account. Not saying name the account Peaches, but I'm saying you have to have you have to separate the identities, your real self and your night shift self. So I didn't never think about that. Yeah, so that's going to be important because what that does is it creates a separation between you and the business because now as a self-employed individual, there's business deductions that you can take. Right. So that's what you need to do. So let's say you you go ahead and set up this business account. Right. Um. What I do is then we can either put that into QuickBooks. So QuickBooks is like an online platform that you can use for accounting. And then what I'll do on the back end is categorize everything. So say, okay, this is the revenue. This wow. is um, this, and within the revenue, this is coming from tip money. This is coming from Instagram. This is coming from you right. know, the different um, categories, advertising, whatever the case is, endorsements or whatever. Oh. And then having the expenses along with that, just so we can make sure that when it comes tax time, you, you can go ahead and file what's called a Schedule C, yeah, which is for sole proprietors. You put that on there, and that's like a separate tax reform uh, form that you need to do. That's dope, what he just said, because normally when we think about business account, us we just be like business. We never think that our dancer lifestyle is a business. It's and even me business. being like thinking I'm so organized, you just really opened my eyes up to that. So. That was like, I'm gonna have to do a bombshell effect. That was like a bomb tip because we're all scrambling trying to figure out how to file taxes and that was the answer the whole time. Right. To open up a separate account and you'll be able to, like long as you're using that account and using it often yeah. with your transactions, you can keep, con oh wow, so see, this is why you need a CPA. On average, how much would it cost to have a personal CPA? Like what is, not saying your specific, your specific cost, but like, what is that cost of having someone like you in their life? Yeah, so it really depends, honestly, because like I said, there's there's different kinds of CPAs that focus on different services. So if you want, and it depends on the project too, right? And how complex your situation is. So really what we do is we go through a process where we understand like where you're at, but just to give you like an average. So they say the average um, per hour fee for a CPA is about, you know, 125 to 250. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how big the range is. Uh, don't let that intimidate you because again, it depends on the service, right? So let's say you want to do tax prep. There's some CPAs who, if you just want to get your taxes done, some of them charge the same amounts that they what they charge at like H and R Block. Right. But at least with a CPA, you know that that's an individual that went through like a, a long process in order to make sure they have the understanding because you know the H and R Blocks, and really their process is they they can bring in. You know, individuals they don't necessarily have to have an accounting background. Right. Just Anybody can just yeah, do exactly. Them. You could just you just go ahead and get that stuff. You don't even honestly you don't even need a high school degree. No. Yeah. 
to get your body this or you go on TurboTax and log in and charge people yeah Yeah. exactly so um that's the benefit of working with the cpa but and but but again it really depends on the type of service yeah so but if you wanted to have someone who do ongoing bookkeeping services you know that's that's depending on the level of service you need and everything so i hate to give you like a big broad answer but um it is a little bit more of an investment but again you get you get um your money back you get a best friend anybody take care of my money right that's the best friend <laughs> um but uh, but like okay so you say 125 250 an hour now how often do you talk to your cpa like how, how much like how does this work so if i have a cpa cpa with that bundle that bundle i want you to do my taxes and i want you to be my best friend my yeah. money my taxes i need you in my life what like how does that work how do i pay you by how do i like see you once a month yeah so that that depends too right so it, it really depends on the individual and, and the relationship that you all develop. So yeah. let's say that you want like that, yo, you just want to be that that CPA best yeah. year. I take care of your money, I take care of your, your taxes and all that kind right. of stuff. And we can probably set up a, a situation where it's like a retainer. Yeah. It could be like a one-time payment, it could be a monthly payment, it could be like a quarterly payment. So again, it really depends on your specific needs. So like I said, really that first process is understanding, okay, what your needs are. Right. And then working with someone who is like willing to work with your situation so it's going to really yeah. be customized you right know what i mean but it could be but be prepared it could be between you know a few hundred it could be a few thousand yeah but again it's um you're having someone that pretty much takes care of like it's, yeah. com- it's almost like you're hiring like your own cfo you yeah. know what i mean what's a cfo like, and a cfo is a chief financial officer so like you know you have these corporations like the googles the walmarts all these companies that have what's called a chief financial officer and right. they're they're the people who manage the like oversee the money for the business right you know what i mean so you're hiring kind of like someone to manage the money for your business um because you're, you're a business owner you're self-employed right. right so i guess the suggestion would be like um girls if you're making you know minimum money dancing it's definitely good to have the services you know if you can't afford to have the services it's good to just pay for the service when you need them flex time and when you want to get some organization or whatever right but um when you're making the big dollars you know you one of them dancers that consistently dance and you make a lot of money and you just don't understand where all your money is going and you can afford to have a customized retainer or a customized relationship with your cpa is definitely a, a really really good thing to have cpa bestie all right, ready? our waitress ready. is here yeah. it's time to order some food we ain't even get time to really look over um the menu the i don't know that i can do that's not on there is um our lemon pepper oh lemon pepper wings yes. not all wings are 10 count and 12 dollars 10 count and 12 dollars okay look yeah my favorite is the butter bay they give you the flavor of cajun but not the spice of it it's with the old bay seasoning and then like with a side of mac and cheese or fries something like that it'd be good appetizer you sound like Beyonce. Where are you from? <laughs> Why you <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna do the hot. I'm gonna do hot wings. That's what I like. Hot wings. Hot, you don't want with, the lemon pepper? No, I don't okay. want lemon pepper. I want hot, and I want them with um blue cheese. What are you thinking about over here, Mitch? I think I might do the the Mr. Impossible sliders just to try to be on my vegan. Are they impossible? Oh, they're oh, you on the vegan? Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to. Oh, I'll I'll go, you now. Now. go ahead, this morning, y'all. Okay, thank Thanks. you so much. No problem. Yeah, so Frost Bristol has some really nice waitresses. We just placed our order. We're going to be showing you guys the food we ordered. Like I said, make sure you follow Frost Bristol on Instagram. If you're not following Rashida and Kurt, make sure you follow them. Flood those comments with JB Navy. Let them know I sent you guys. Definitely make sure you come and check this place out. Okay, it's a really cool spot. They have hookah, drinks, and food, and music. It's a really nice spot. You like it, right? No, it's really nice. It's real chill in here. It's a vibe. Should you file taxes regardless if you got a dependent, if you're getting money back, not getting money back, shouldn't you? I thought that you're supposed to file taxes regardless. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what is your take on that? Yeah, so if you um, have made more than $400 as a self employed individual, you need 400? 400. I thought it was like 11000 No, so 11000 on the if you if you're doing like w2 but if as a self-employed individual oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So see another bomb didn't know that that's a, that's a distinction wow. they want you because the un, as a self-employed individual another thing that you got to consider is you have to pay what's called self-employment tax right so they want that self-employment tax right no so, matter what if you make over 400 dollars of tax yeah so you it you 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 have to pay the self-employment tax now with the deduction now it could pretty much um you what to call uh, offset each other, right? Right. 
but they still want that reporting. So you got to report that, that income. So basically what you said was you have to pay that um, self-employment tax, but you might get it back. That what you was meaning by it right. like, offsetting each other? Yeah, because yeah. you have the deductions. You yeah. have like over $12,000 of deductions as, right. a, as a single individual. But you still need to, you need to, yeah. So some people are afraid of doing their taxes because they're afraid they're going to have to pay something. But he's saying don't be afraid because you may be owed something, right. honestly. But either way, you should do your taxes whether you have to pay or not. It's going to come back later. Like, um, I've had friends who right. ran into the situation with purchasing a house. And they'd be like, well, where are your last, where are these years? Right. But yeah, taxes is that. <laughs> and then now they're delayed on buying their house until they get their taxes in order. So it's better to just go ahead and get it out the way. Yeah, you know? that's like proof of income and all that. So you want to make sure that you're you're doing that. Right. And yeah. the CPA can help with that. Exactly. Because yep. that's another question you're always asking me. How do strippers get proof of income? Well, how if you have a CPA and he's handling your business and your business in order, he can help you organize that to have proof of income for the car lots and for the apartments and the houses and things like that. So you want to like explain that to them, how you can help them get proof of income? Yeah, so really proof of income, The honestly the best, the best way to do it is to make sure that you get your taxes done and you get your tax returns. There's also, um, which is more like, it, it depends on the situation, very unique situations. You could write a letter and the CPA can actually like, Notarize, so notarize yeah. it for you and say, okay, yeah, we we did our due diligence. But then the CPA is also, you know, putting their name online. So right. You so you need sure. to do the right oh, thing you by your CPA. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that that that's that's ways to show proof of income. And another way is proof of income is dancers be digital. Like, stop spending so much cash, 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 cash. Put it in the account. Use your debit card. Show transactions. Show that you're putting money in the bank and you know taking money out. Like, show the transactions because. Once the cash is spent, there's nothing to verify. So I try to do that too. I try to use my bank account more there than you know. cash. So I know we already kind of talked about that CPA help with personal finance, but is there anything else you could say about that? Like, how does a CPA help me with my personal finance, even if I'm not a dancer? Barber, bartender, everybody. Yeah, so again, depending on the CPA that you work with, mm -hmm. they can help you on the personal finance tips. So basically what that looks like is, Maybe helping you manage your, your debt, right? Helping you maybe possibly increasing your credit score. Maybe helping you, giving you some options for retirement, like where do you need to be putting your money? Mm. Um, also, you have CPAs that can help you identify like life insurance, you know? Some, oh, some, some CPAs have life insurance, life insurance. Yeah. Um, um, licenses to yeah. help you get life insurance as well. So yeah, all those things. You guys are, are like lifesavers. <laughs> We're like, money people, yeah. That's like all the questions that we have, we don't have to figure it out by ourselves. No, hundred percent. No, yeah. so you can you can literally There's work help. with a CPA, and then that that you know that can help you with all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah a CPA bestie, like That's right. Okay, so if you had to give an exotic dancer three tips, let's say she, let's say she called and she realized she really can't afford the services, but she said, "What is three things you can tell me to help me get my life on track?" What are three things that you would tell them to help them get their sales on track financially? Yeah, so the first thing is, I would say, to make sure that you all are saving. So, you know, obviously, you're coming across a lot of cash, a lot of money. So you want to make sure you're continuously putting some money on the side, whether that's, you know, starting at 10%, 20%, 30%. You want to make sure that you're putting um, some money aside, you know, just for, just in case of an emergency. You don't know what could happen. So, like, I always recommend folks to, Stay between six to twelve months of living expenses. So let's yeah. say that you're spending about twelve two two thousand. If your living expense is about two thousand to five thousand dollars a month, you want to make sure that she, <laughs> thirty thousand. Well, for no no no. So like for for each month. So let's say you're spending about tw uh two to to maintain your lifestyle. Yeah. It's about let's call it five thousand. Yeah, let's say five thousand. Five thousand mm -hmm. per month. You want to make sure that you have six months of savings. So like yeah, thirty thirty thousand saved. That's you know that's like emergency. so um, like that's like some textbook stuff because I know, that's, that's like unreal. And it's not unrealistic, but it's hard. Like, cause how do you save and pay bills at the same time? You could so you do it. You do it baby steps, right? So I'm not telling you so to build it six months. Of oh, saving. you're not saying save five thousand and pay five thousand. Oh no 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 no. You're no, just no, saying yeah, at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah, at some point that's that's the that needs to be the goal. You need to have an account. Yeah, so think oh, about okay, like, yeah, scared yeah. me. I'm like, how oh, pay no, five thousand? No, so you, it's a baby step. So let's say that you're making like 
five thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I'm telling you to put away five hundred yeah. a month. You know what I'm saying? Just start with like ten percent of whatever you're bringing in. Yeah. And then over time, that's gonna be a lot of time because you know, tw after twelve months, you're gonna be at six thousand. Yeah. Okay, cool. But then maybe it takes you two, three years to do that. Whatever. But Build it. however yeah. you want to, but you want to make sure you're constantly putting money away. Yeah. So that's really how you start building your wealth and start, you know, creating a lot. At least because because you don't want to. If an emergency happens, you don't want to have to try to, you know, hustle come in. hustle and try to come out of pocket and be like in a situation where it's like, you know, I don't have any cash. And the banks value that too. You letting money sit, like right. not touching it. Yeah. And you can build interest on it too. It's yeah. Not, you're, you're not, it's not gonna make you rich, honestly, with the interest, but you know, you can make a it little builds bit a relationship. Yeah. They know that you're capable of saving. Yeah. Uh, the third thing I would recommend is definitely consider, you know, getting some life insurance. So if you have dependents, if you have children. You know, unfortunately, you know, we're kind of shooting this. We're pretty like almost a, over a week away from Kobe's passing. And yeah, yeah I mean, it's um, Major. It Nipsey very, too, not too long yeah, ago. Can Nipsey. you believe it's been a year? Yeah. That's crazy, it's right? Insane. I feel like that was like six months ago or something. Yeah, it feels like yesterday. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. So yeah, you, I mean, obviously these, both of those, both of those kings, like they, they went out, they lived their regular life. Suddenly. Doing, doing something they always do. Nipsey's always at the marathon club. Yeah. So, Kobe's always flying that helicopter back and forth. Yeah. So they didn't, you don't, you don't know when something's gonna happen. They have children, they have family. I know because of the kind of money they make, I know they both, you know, had that in place and, you know, um, their family and their heirs are protected. Yeah. But you wanna make sure that you have that in place. So that's just right. something, you know, again, a lot of people don't consider, especially when you're young, but if you have children, 100% you wanna um, look into potentially getting some life insurance. Yeah. And that's like a whole nother, you know, conversation that we can And then, but the life insurance helps with, like we said, generational wealth too, because if something happens to you, it gives your kid or whoever a fresh start to yeah. financial start. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what other ethnicities do. Right. And we need to do more. <laughs> you know, working on, you know, building, building your credit score too, you know yes. what I'm saying? Because again, you're coming across a lot of cash and you feel like that's good, but then sometimes you want to be able to have a credit score in place. You want to make sure that's a, a certain score to be able to be able to borrow money if you need to, right. or you know, be able to acquire assets to continue to build up your legacy. Yeah, and I want to add something that to that too. A credit score also helps you get the best of things because I, you get a car and you get a 25% interest rate. Because your credit score isn't good, you do not get the best quality of things when you have a low credit score and you don't take care of your credit. So it's not just about borrowing money, it's also about getting the best quality of life because the longer you keep sitting on that low um, credit score, you're not gonna get the best quality from banks. You're not gonna get the best quality from the dealership. They're not gonna give you the lowest um, price that they can give you. You're not gonna walk off the lot with no money down, okay? You're going to get the worst of the worst because they can't trust you. Thanks. And so I, you know, it's it's about the borrowing money. That's cool, but I just want, I want to go into dealership. And they say whatever you want, no money back, <laughs> two percent interest rate, whatever you want. That's what I. That's the relationship yeah, I want. You know, does a bank account help you help us? Like us having a bank account. You've already said that. But. Yeah, hundred percent. Because what it does is you have the bank account one, so mm -hmm. it's just keeping things separate, which is something that's best practice. And then two, with that bank account you can um, actually feed into like their softwares out there. Like I said, like QuickBooks, you can connect your bank account and your uh, QuickBooks account and it automatically pulls in the transactions. So do you like monitor us in Texas and say, hey now, uh, I see you just spent <laughs> 3,000, what's that about? Do you also kind of like, do you, is there something you could possibly do? Could you possibly be like an accountability partner? 100 percent yeah yeah that's, like, that's the huge piece slow down yeah so with that cpa success system that a yeah is accountability so accountability is huge and that's how you make get honestly that's how you get results like in real life like it's yeah. cool to know you know where you're at where you're trying to go yeah. that's one piece yeah then you have you can know a whole bunch of information but you don't have someone like checking in with you and even if and even if i'm not checking you like for real for real like even if i see it I, and i'll approach you about it right when you make that purchase you'll be like oh, What's Michigan thing? When he sees this come through, right? Oh, quick dollars. book alert! You got yeah. a quick book alert. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good discipline, though. I would yeah. love that. It's like having a dad. It's like, oh shit, I spent dad's credit card. Oh my right. god, he's going to see it. But I think we need that discipline. Not only do we need you to, of course, be there and clean it all up, but 
you know, I don't want to look back 10 years from now and be like, how'd you let me do this? Right. Like, why'd you let me do all this? Why you never said anything? You the one that know all this money I'm spending. And then when I come to you, be like, Jazz, you negative. I'll be like, what? <laughs> why you didn't tell me? Like, help me. You know what I mean? For so I, I, think it's, I think it's a great idea for the CPA to be kind of disciplinarian. Like, you telling me you want to buy a house, you want to buy a house, right? You can't be making these type of purchases. Exactly. It would be good to be like that strong motivator too. 100%. So that's, that'd yeah. be dope. Tough love, you know what I'm saying? Because if yeah. you're coming to me and you're telling me like, yo, I'm trying to get a house. Right. I'm trying to, you know, put away money for my kids. Right. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm trying to help you get to that goal. Yeah, I'm trying to help it. you get to that goal. Like, yeah. this is what you told me. Like, I didn't come up with it. You told me that's what you want to yeah. do. So, like, and I want to keep you dedicated to that because I want to see you get that house. Exactly. And I want to see you subscribe. You know what I'm saying? 100. Yeah. Um, because to me, honestly, I was I need that. Now, I don't see a reason in having a CPA if you're not going to like be on me and help me get to my goal. Because like, just organizing the money and watching me spend it all, I'm still doing the same bad habits set with monitoration now. Like, now you're monitoring me, but I'm still doing bad stuff. Right. So it's not really helping me, it's just cleaned up now. It's just uh -huh. clean, but I'm still ma making bad decisions. So my personal opinion, mm -hmm. you guys definitely need this for discipline and you need it to clean up and organize. So yeah, I think that's a big thing that dancers really, really need, especially the dancer um, community. Like you said, having a good credit score, having the savings, and also having the life insurance is, is three ways to well, and then uh, investing too. So exactly. like looking for different ways. So not only that, so you have other businesses that you can invest to. You can um, also invest money in real estate. So real estate now, you know, is obviously it's it's the most the majority of millionaires out there have become rich. Yeah. Our uh, real estate has created the most millionaires out of like any other um, assets or ways to get money. Yeah. So maybe considering getting some like rental properties, learning a little bit about. Um, you know what it means to like buy and hold property and right. all that kind of good stuff because that's how you really can that's how you really can create like generational wealth because that's I mean houses are not going anywhere people are always going to need house and land. land ain't going nowhere yeah house and land is not going anywhere yeah. they can't they can't create more land you right. know what I mean and for the homes people are always going to want to live in homes and that's something that you can always pass on to your children you know what I mean they can continue to build and and scale that so I would say those are those are the main things. Okay, and that's some of the things that we already know, but I think that you helped us a lot because I think a lot of girls try to figure out, well, how can I do this? How do I file my taxes? How do I how do I do this? And that bomb that you dropped earlier about dancers, you are a business. Open a separate account. That is like that is like your that is like I open it for me because like I said, I never ever thought about that. I know I could open a business account, but I never thought about opening an account strictly for dancing. And that is like next to proof of income i don't have to worry about proof of income because that's mm -hmm. always a question i don't have to worry about how i'm gonna file my taxes because i have a whole bank account with all my revenue i can go somewhere and get my taxes filed rather i owe rather i'm not getting anything or not so those are ways to help you kind of get your wheels turning on what to do to start your financial journey because a lot of dancers we don't know we don't right. know anything but make it spend it you know should a dancer fill out a 1099 or a w4 or w2 which one is it so there's so yeah, there's a couple things that you can do. So if as a dancer or as a, as a self-employed individual, you fill out what's called a W-9. A w right, a W-9. So a W-9 form is like an informational form. So that's gonna be the form that you put your name, you put your business on there. If you have an EIN, you can use your social security number on there. And that's just what the business of the company has. So they can pay you what's called a, a 1099. Mm. So that's like the, the self-employed or the independent contractor contractor version of a W-2. Oh, okay. So that's what they that's what they call it. So that's a 1099 um, instead of the W-2. Right. And the W-4, um, for those of you who are working also um, part-time or full-time during, you know, whenever, is um, you have what's called W-4 and that's what they, you tell, that's that's the, that's what, you, that's the informational um, document that you provide to your employer. Oh, okay. So I had the numbers worker. all mixed up. I don't know anything yeah, about that. <laughs> okay, so you broke that down for me. I want to introduce you guys to his new book. Let me see that over there. Yes, yes. Yes, The Prolific Profit. Okay, this book is going viral all over the place. I've seen this book. And actually, I think this one is mine, right? That's your This copy. one is for me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what is, tell me, like, what's your favorite part of this book? Like, I'm um, definitely going to read this. It's probably going to take me two days to read this. Uh, yeah, I try to make it really simple to read. Really Honestly, simple. so um, 
the the book the my favorite part of the book um crazy enough is what i call the prolific preface okay okay and the prolific go preface there. that's like the beginning that's like the before the the book even begins is the preface and it really talks about the story of my life um and i'll share this really quick on that i don't want to ruin the whole thing for you pretty much i share a story about when i was eight years old me and my family were actually laid out on the floor held at gunpoint um, oh my god yeah so it was it's a very um yeah yeah, it was right here, very, get rich or die trying. Yeah, get rich or die trying. Woo. Yeah, so yeah, that that story I talk in vivid details about um, that experience, how that changed my life, and how that that really shaped my thinking and yeah. the way I approached the business of life because it was, um, yeah, it was it was very, traumatic, very very traumatic for me. Oh so, wow! Yeah. Oh, so this um, is like a story. It's like a it's like about you and also about finances. Yeah, so it's really about business, but I share that story about myself. So no, that's, that's, dope. Like, hey, that's dope. So yeah, but it's 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 more of a business book. But that that story to me, like it's it's the whole book. So if you don't read anything in that book, right, you want to make sure that you just read that part. Read that part. Oh but, wow! Yeah, you guys, make, there's going to be a link down below so you guys can get in and order this book. Please show some support and order this book. We're also grouping together for a really really dope event really really dope event for all my exotic dancers out there for the dancer community this is something that i've really really been wanting to do for a very long time and michelle money making mitch hey. is definitely going to be in the building details on that is coming very very soon we're about to get ready to get our food but until next time jb navy thank you so much thank mitch you. i appreciate you this is about to be my cpa bestie <laughs> so if y'all want to be with us Y'all yeah, definitely need to hit him up, contact him for any finance services, tax services, everything. Get you a CPA bestie, okay? So until next time, JB Navy, I'm out.